Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Well, in this episode, we're gonna take a look at the Spry Plus. This drone came out, you know, several months ago. I never reviewed it before, but Swell Pro sent me a version here. This one it comes in a nice hard case, uh, a lot of stuff inside. You'll see it in the unboxing and they want me to review it. So let me show you the drone. First up, this orange beast is the drone. Why is it so different from every other drone? Well, for one thing, it's 100% waterproof. Yeah, you can like dart this into the water and you won't damage it, nothing. It can flip upside down, flip around. It's uh, waterproof. Oh, that's not the only thing. And the controller is waterproof as well and has a built-in display. So all of you out there who keep asking me, review a drone that has a built-in display. Well, here's one right here. So you don't need a phone with this. Now, you can use a phone to do certain things with the drone. If you use a phone, then you can use an app that will do waypoints and points of interest. So you can just look on the map and send your drone off someplace. And you can also use an app to, just like on a GoPro, set the camera settings. As a matter of fact, speaking of the camera, it is a 4K 30 frames per second camera. It's got a Sony sensor, so it's pretty darn decent. Here, let me just grab the drone. The camera sits behind this piece of plastic up front, so you don't want to scratch that, whatever you do. But Obviously, if a camera is behind a piece of plastic, it doesn't have a gimbal. You know, a gimbal like a three axis to go side to side, up and down, and keep your footage stabilized. So what it does instead, since it has a Sony sensor and they spent all the money on having a good quality camera, is it uses electronic image stabilization. Now, I've mentioned that it records at 4K 30 frames per second, but it can also record at 2K 60 frames per second, and I believe 1080p at 120 frames per second, and even down to like 720p at 240 frames per second for super slow motion. Now, since this here controller is waterproof, obviously if you're on a boat and you drop it in the water, you don't want your phone attached, right? Think about it, you don't want your phone attached. So what they've done is they've hardwired all the switches and the buttons. So if you want it to follow you, you just press a button. If you want it to do certain things, turn the GPS on or off, uh, come back to you, all sorts of things. It's all here, change the channel, Panel. Everything's there. It's not a touch screen because you can't have something that's waterproof be a touch screen because wet fingers, ugh, everything's gonna get messed up. So now I haven't flown this drone and I'm out here this evening to fly it. The sun is going down over there, so I gotta hurry up. But I will tell you one thing. This is a hybrid drone. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, first off, take a look at the props. You know, they sent me these props. These are not the normal props you put on it. These are the props you put on an FPV quad. So I stuck them on here because this is a hybrid drone. It's part FPV and it's part camera drone. Both of them together. So what does that mean? That means I could fly this with my fat sharks if I wanted to. Yeah, so if you have goggles at home and you have this drone, you don't have to use the display and look at it on the controller. You could just put your fat shark or goggles on and fly around. You've got an FPV drone. All right, so we're almost at the part where I'm gonna take it out for a spin. Now this controller is rechargeable and I will say one thing really cool about this. I'm not gonna do one of those uh, demos in this video where I return to home and see if it lands on the takeoff pad because this drone is 100% designed to always come back to where the controller is. That's because if you're on a boat and the drone takes off and next thing you know, the boat moves someplace else, you don't want the drone coming back to where you were you want to come back to where you are so the drone always comes back to the controller all right so it's time to take this for a flight but one thing I have to mention I can't show you what's on the screen you know with a camera because you know it's not my phone I can't record it but I did say it was FPV so I'm gonna record the video that goes back to here on my fat sharks and that way I can show you exactly what this here screen is doing here we go. All right, I have the drone down here and the controller and I have a GoPro so I can show you how everything works. So watch this, I go over here and I just press this button. This is the power button. It comes to life, it is on. And then I come over to the controller. This is how easy it is and I press this, hold it down and watch what happens down here, Swell Pro and there we go, there's the video feed. So that's what the drone sees. Can you see that? There we go. There, now you can see it. So it's pretty bright, but I don't think out on a sunny, sunny day, you would see that without some sort of sunshade. So we're ready to fly. It's that simple. All right, time out, time out. Steve from the future here. I just want to show you the interface on the controller. I tried to record it earlier when I made the video, but uh, my fat sharks right over here, uh, I forgot to hit the record. So I'm going to show you it now really quick. So I'm going to put over top of this screen, I'm going to put exactly what you see on the controller, just so you can identify it later in the video when I'm showing the actual screen. Here we go. All right, top left of the screen would be the number of satellites. The P and the R, that's your pitch and roll. So watch this as I lift this up, watch the pitch and roll change. There's your roll and there's your pitch and the number should change as I do that. Next one down the left-hand side of the screen is your flight speed. 
The bottom two on the lower left would be your flight time and the battery voltage. Going along the very bottom, all those zeros, that's your distance from the takeoff point. And if you go over to the right hand side, the lower right hand side, that's your vertical height and the one above it is your vertical speed. And looking at the top right, you have three items. The lower one is the remote controller signal strength. Next one up is your current throttle. So as you go faster, that will change. And finally, the top one is your flight mode. So if you look at the flight mode right now, I'm gonna flick this switch. So I'm in GPS, it should say GPS. Middle one is I wanna do a circle. And the bottom one is Addy mode, which on here just says altitude mode. All right, now back to the video. Next thing I wanna show you up here is you have a switch. It says GPS, circle flight if you want it to orbit. And down here is Addy mode, that means no GPS. So if it's windy out and you don't know how to fly a drone, never stick it in that. And then over on this side, we have normal mode. That's what I'm gonna leave it in for flight. And that's how I get it returned to home. Over here, I can start and stop video or take a picture. And over here, I have the follow me button. So now everything that's displayed on the screen, now you can't really see it through the GoPro, right? But over here, I have my fat sharks and it's recording everything. So I should be able to show it to you over top of the screen. All right, coming back down to the drone. First thing it tells you to do is you have to do a compass calibration the very first time you fly it and gyro calibration. I am not gonna do either because, well, it's too easy. If it's got this mode here and I can take it out of GPS mode, I can fly it. I don't need the GPS, but uh, well, let's just see what happens. Here we go. All right, it's pretty simple. Let's look on my screen. It says GPS right there on the top right. And I'm gonna put an Addy mode just to take off. So I have no GPS. Pull these in or out, props go. I'm flying without GPS. Here we go. Take it up. Nice and slow. There we are. So that's no GPS, so it's moving with the wind. I'm walking with it here. Now, if I wanna turn the GPS on so it stands still, I press this, GPS is on. Let's see if a toilet bowls or sits still. No, it sits still, so that means it's a quality drone. I did not do a compass calibration or a gyro calibration and check that out. That is pretty darn still. So look at that, it's pretty darn stable in the air. I can walk around it. Now, in order to change the camera settings on the drone, you have to do it with the phone app. So you power on the drone, mine's on, you can see some little lights blinking. And then if you look at the very bottom here, there's a little button right there. If you press that button, it goes into Wi-Fi mode for your phone. So I'm gonna press it, and then all you do is connect your phone to the Wi-Fi of the drone. Here we go. So I'll press this, it changes colors, and now watch my phone display. I'm gonna connect to the Wi-Fi. All right, so I've connected to the Wi-Fi on my phone, and now I'm gonna go into the app. The app you wanna use is Swellcam 2. Click on the video camera, which is the middle one on the left, and there we go. So I click on resolution. These are all the resolutions I can choose. So I've got 4K 30, and you can see I've got 2K 60, and so forth and so on. You could read them all there. I can also change the electronic stability. I can turn it on or off. Right now it's on. I can change the recording format so that it's MOVE or MP4, and I can change the video format to NTSC or PEL. Now, let me show you the settings for the camera. Photo size, I can take 12 megapixel photos at 4.3 or 16.9. I can do burst shooting, I can do interval shooting, and I can do time-lapse selfies. Finally, on the lower left, there's a settings button. I can click on that, and I have my exposure value. I can format the memory card in the drone. I can do reset everything to factory settings or go to about what the firmware is on this here device. And it should be telling me on the bottom. Yeah, it says it's recording in 4K, 30 frames per second. So here, I'm in the shot. So how does that look? Remember, there is no camera gimbal on here. So as the drone moves around, it has to use image stabilization, electronic, to keep everything still. So it's not perfect. Let's try the uh, first item on here, which is the follow me. So let's see what happens. It's the big F here. I can hit that. There we go. It's in follow me. It's supposed to follow this thing. So let's see if it does. There we go. So I'm looking at it. It's following. It's following the controller. And it looks like it doesn't have an issue with height because look at how low it is. Some drones, you have to go way up in the air for the follow me. And this one just seems to be right there. So how's that video at following me? Usually when you do a follow me, you have a drone high up in the air, but I should be able to walk under stuff. So let me get over here really quick. I'll just run. I'm gonna go under this tree. Most drones can't follow you under stuff. So let's see. I'll go under the tree. I'm hiding, hiding, hiding. Let's see. Still gonna follow me. If I come out, I'll scoot along, go to the other one. There we go. There we go. So, 
There's the follow me. It definitely is a sweet looking drone, that's for sure. All right, let's try the orbit. So I'm gonna put this up and I'm gonna put in orbit mode. I'm gonna hit this little switch here, circle flight. Here we go, circle flight. See what happens, it goes that way. And it's turning back to me and it should just orbit me. There we go. So as long as I have the camera pointed down, life is good. I guess it wants me to stand a little bit more this way. But uh, that's it, circle flight is happening. So that's pretty sweet that you could just hit one button and you have everything you want. All right, so let's stop circle flight. I'll put it back into GPS. Now it does take 4K pictures. So I just press this red button here, makes a beep and it took a photo. Now the photos that the Spry Plus takes are all 12 megapixels, so it's pretty darn decent. Now one thing you have to be careful of is when you land it, watch this. <laughs> if you're flying and you hit the down and you wanna go down, it goes down really fast and up really fast. Why does it do that? Because it doesn't know if there's water below and there's no sensors on the bottom. So when you go up, it's very fast. And when you come down, it's very fast. You can literally smash it into the ground or yourself, so be very careful with that. So the range on this is about 800 meters. I'm gonna take it out over to the school, the way down there. So there we go, it's flying out, it's heading over to the school over there, and uh, let's see how it goes. There's a little bit of a breeze, it's gonna go over the water. The cool thing is, is, since it's like an FPV drone, as soon as your video signal craps out, you get snow on the screen. You'll start to see snow developing as my signal is becoming weak. And that's the same thing that happens when you fly FPV. You see it happening now? I'm looking down at the school and I can just spin it around. There we go, spin it around. Okay, there we go, I've got it coming back to me. So you can now see the snow on the screen as the signal's getting weak, but it's gonna get stronger. I'm coming over the water, I'm going full speed. I'm in GPS mode. Uh, if I put it into Addy mode, it would come even faster. So let me show you that right now. I'm gonna go right out of GPS, boink. I'm in Addy mode, so there we go. That's like full speed forward. So now we're really moving it, we're booting it. And we're going the wrong direction. Let me just turn this way a little bit over to the left. Let's bank it. There we go. And coming over to me on the left. There we are. And if you leave it off with GPS off, does the return to home work? You see the wind's blowing it. Look, it's going away over there. See it moving? I'm gonna hit it on return to home, see what happens. It should kick the GPS in. Yeah, see it stopped and the GPS is on now, so. So if you fly it with no GPS and then hit the return to home, it turns the GPS back on and it's coming overhead and coming down for a landing. And even if I move the drone as it's coming down, watch this, I'll move it forward. It should come back to me automatically as if I was landing on a boat and there we come down. So it always wants to come with the radio is and look at that. And it should turn off. I'm not sure how long this flies for, but just to be safe, I'm gonna change the battery and then fly it some more. So let me show you how I change the battery. Just turn this, pull this here, water sealed case up and there's your battery there is a strap on it right here pull that out there's your battery and uh, let's put in another one right here so batteries in push that down push you back on and then you just spin this dial and that locks everything in place we're all done All right, let me show you one more really cool thing that I think you'll use that you need an app for. So watch this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect our phone to the controller now because even though you can fly with the controller, we're gonna add more features to the controller. Watch this. So with your cell phone, you have to connect to the Wi-Fi of the remote controller of this thing, not the drone. So there we go, on my phone, it is now connected to the controller and now I can go into the app for the controller. So the app you're gonna use is called Spry. Just click on that and we're gonna be in it. All right, so when you're in the app, you're not gonna see through the camera because it's not an app for a camera. It's gonna show you a map of where you are. So look at my screen. This is where I am right now. It probably looks like nothing. So on the top right, I'm gonna hit the button to zoom in on me. 
and there we go so you can see there's a little red arrow where i am and i can use my fingers and expand it and get down even closer i'm in a park so look at the top right you're going to see a picture of the drone it looks like a paper airplane and one point so i'm going to click on that and there we go now it says where do you want the drone to go so now i'm going to touch in the general area of the school which is over there and that's it that's where the drone would fly to so if i touch that little spot i put over the school there we go it says what do i want it to do there's my altitude so i want it to go at 37 meters uh, flight speed hover time and longitude latitude and then i would say okay and there we are and now quickly i'll show you waypoints waypoints are the second icon from the right so i click on that and if you look at my drone it's right here the red arrow and i can put waypoints around the field and go one two three four five i can put as many as i want and for each waypoint i can then tell it what to do so if i click on waypoint number two there we go what altitude do i want waypoint number two to be and so forth and so on all my information click ok and we're all done hit the up arrow at the right and it will fly to that location now i'd fly these waypoints and show you but it is so windy out here that this drone without me controlling it uh, i'd be a little leery because there's people playing out in the field and stuff so i wouldn't want to do that you can see here the controller is on and it is waterproof as well so you could drop it in the water, you could be swimming and uh, fly your drone. And now i got to walk in the water to get it. There we go. Let's try from higher up and drop it in the water. So up, 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 and here we're going to go slam it down in the water. <sighs> Not bad. Let's survive that. That is pretty darn sweet. This thing is super, super durable. And look at this. You can move it along in the water. I can drive it in the water here. I'm not going to take off. I'm just going to hover it in the water, and I'm actually driving it. So I could drive it forward slowly. Spin it around, lift it out of the water. And then uh, take it for a flight. So in order to make this waterproof, they also had to make it durable. And that's basically what it is. They advertise this as the most waterproof drone on the market, but I would say it probably should be advertised as the most durable drone because it's solid as a rock. Okay, the camera's wet, but looking at me, here's what it looks like when it goes into the water. Here, I'll just bring it closer so you can see me larger than life. There we go. Get down here. There we are. And uh, can you see me? And now I've got the motors on while the camera's looking up, and I'm going to spin it so it rotates around to look at me. There we go. This thing is so easy to control. And now I'm going to lift it up. There I am. There you can see me. I'm just coming out of the water and then under and then coming out. Easily, easy, easy to manipulate this. And then uh, go up higher. There we are. Now I'm just hovering above the water. Come closer. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Let's bring the camera down a bit now that I've got it up. So you could really get some really cool shots with this drone, I think, honestly. All you have to do is make sure uh, you don't get water on the camera lens before you get the cool shots. And then coming forward. And over me. Now I've taken a look at the video of this drone flying around and I can see a little bit of jello. You know it is electronic image stabilization and usually when you get jello in a drone it's due to the props. So these are not the props that you would get if you bought it. You know the props are just the dual blade props and um, hmm, I'm wondering if this is the problem these tri-blade props because they're more for like cruising really fast and cornering. So I'm going to take these off and I'm going to put the original dual blade props back on and then I'm going to do a follow me in flight and uh, see if the jello is still there. Let's check that out. So these are the props that come with the drone and they appear to be designed for the drone vice these ones which are like FPV props but they were sent to me so I put them on so let's put these ones on.
take it up and uh, see how it is now. Flies pretty much the same. Right, those are the dual props on it now, not the tri props. And uh, let's try the follow me. So let's pick it up out here. Take it through the trees. All right, hit the follow me button, push this in, F. So how is the video from the drone? I have it pretty low to the ground. It's not high up. There I'm walking, you can see here, nothing exciting. And uh, turn and look at the drone, it's right there. Just seeing if the props are providing any less vibrations to the actual camera. Because anytime you get jello in a drone, it's always the props that's the problem. It's just one prop is less balanced than another prop, that's all it is. All right, the Spry Plus from Swell Pro. Really durable, you know, one of a kind drone. I've never reviewed anything like this that is this durable and waterproof. So if it was a rainy day right now, I could fly. If it was a snowy day, I could fly because this thing is totally environmental proof. You can fly it in all types of weather. Well, every type of weather actually with uh, no issues. Now the flight time, I've been trying to figure out exactly what the flight time is that I've been getting. I have three batteries and I've used each battery and each time I had a different flight time. So I'm not really sure what it is, but I'm going to say it's around 15 minutes. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'll post it below what the flight time is or what the advertised flight time is. For me, the type of flying I was doing with going up and down really fast, moving forward and backwards, sometimes I thought I was getting 20 minutes, but other times I thought I was getting more like 15 minutes. So the flight time is between 15 and 20 minutes with this thing. So if you get one of these, you might want to get two batteries. I think honestly, this drone meets a lot of requirements from a lot of people because I get a lot of people asking, I want a drone that has a display in it. So this has the display in it. And I also want a drone that is good for water and I want to go fishing and attach fishing line to it. And uh, this you could attach fishing line to it somehow. That way, if your drone crashes into water because you had too much fishing line or whatever, well, then it's waterproof. It'll just take off again. So it's not an issue. If you own a boat, this is the drone you probably should have. The smoothness of the video is totally up to you. Since there's no gimbal on here, the last thing you want to do when you're flying this is make it go like this, you know, forward, backward, stopping, starting. Just smooth movements on the joysticks and you should get smooth video. It's, it's that easy. All right, I'm going to put links below to where you can find this drone, the Spry Plus on the Swell Pro website and any other place they ask me to uh, show you where the links are. Check it out and see if it's for you. I know it's currently on sale right now, so if you want to pick one up for a Christmas gift, now might be a good time. So check it out. It'd be pretty cool. Somebody would love this because just power this on, power this on, and you go fly. Nothing else required. And if you have questions on this baby, post them below and I'll get back to you. But more importantly, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate that very much. There is an unboxing coming next and I'll show you everything that came in the box that Swell Pro sent me. And I'm slowly learning that not everybody gets the same thing. So I think they might have sent me some extra goodies. So anyways, watch the unboxing check it out and uh, yeah thumbs up catch you in the next video hope you enjoyed this one bye and now a super quick unboxing of the spry plus waterproof drone here we go turn it sideways you can see it comes in a nice case with a handle on top which is great for taking all over the place so let's open it up inside we have well we have the drone the case has multi-level so the top level has the drone in it and this is how it comes it's basically all set like that all solid one drone and you can pull this off that's just some protection for the front and here we can see everything so let's take a close look you can see it's not a foldable drone and you can see it's a bright orange so on every leg you have a nice little rubber dampener for landing on all sorts of surfaces the bottom looks like it has a venting system but no that's all waterproof so no water can get in there that's probably just a cooling heat sink you have two antennas on this drone so one is right here and one is right there you also have what looks to be a little light here and it does sort of click and it shows a Wi-Fi type communication system on there. You can see right here there's brushless motors. They are designed to get water in them so there's no problem. They're made out of metal, probably something that doesn't rust. You have the nuts on top for attaching the propellers. They are, if I look at the marking on them, they're 1600 kV 2206 motors. So that means they don't spin super fast but they are very powerful. They have a lot of torque. And here's where the battery goes. That comes off. I'll just pull it. It's very tightly sealed and there you can see inside. So in the very back that's where your battery is going to hook into to provide power. You you do have a USB port right there and in here is where you put your micro SD card. The battery compartment's a locking system. It has two little tongs here. You push down on those, get it nice and tight, and then you can rotate this top part. Moving to the front of the drone, this is your camera system. There is a piece of 
plastic protection. I'll get rid of that. You have to be very careful not to scratch this up because even though your lens is below it for protection, if you scratch this up, you'll have to replace it because that's what your camera is going to see, scratches. Inside you see the camera and it does move up and down in this little protective housing that does not let water in. All right, let's see what else is in this case. Lifting this up, what do we have? So here's the controller, the battery charger. Looks like some batteries back here and some accessories. So let's look at them one by one. First item in the box is the controller. You can see down here, that's where you charge it. USB plug and you have to get this in nice and tight because it is waterproof. Power button and that's to change your channels because it is a Wi-Fi type drone. Everything is protected here on your gimbals. Really good. And your switches are nicely labeled exactly what they do. And on the back we have nothing. Just this piece of aluminum here that's probably rust proof. And as well you have this section here where you attach your two antennas. So it actually tells you on here 5.8. So that's video and 2.4. So that's your telemetry. And it warns you right on the screen. It says please do a compass calibration before your very first flight. So my drone, I don't know if they all come like this, but my drone came with three batteries. So let's take these out. Let's see, I got three batteries here. Taking a look at the back of the battery, you can see it's 11.4 volts. So that means it's a three cell battery in here at 3,600 milliamp hours. So that'll give you some flight time. It just depends how you fly and having three batteries, well, then you can get lots of flight time. Next, we have the charging system for the batteries right here. And you can see on one end, you're gonna plug that into your wall outlet. It comes with a cable for that. And on the other end, it's for your batteries. And I'm used to these. This looks like a normal charger. So you've got a two cell, three cell, and four cell charger. And on the front, it should tell you. You should have some little lights here that work. So you do get this goodie bag and there's a lot of items in here and I do see the cable you need for charging your battery which is this one right here. So this unit here goes in your battery charger. You would plug the big end into the appropriate spot right there and the small end goes into your battery. Also in the goodie bag you get a wrench and it is made out of metal and you use this to put your props on and off. You also get some spare parts in here and some other goodies. They do include a USB cable. You use this to charge up your radio controller. You get a nice manual here with all sorts of instructions. Interesting goodie here. I don't know if everybody gets this because of the packaging, but this is just another piece, a locking mechanism. It looks like for your radio controller if you want to replace this one with a locking one. Speaking of the radio, here's the two antennas and they are nicely marked. A power cable is included for your charger. Now you do get two full sets of two blade props, but what's interesting with my kit, mine came with tri-blade props. These are the type you use on FPV drones. So yeah, these would be much cooler than the two blades. These are tri-blades. I'm going to put the props on and the battery in here and give it a quick wane. All right, so I'm going to use the tri-blade props because I'm used to flying FPV drones and apparently this flies a little bit like an FPV drone. All right, props are on the drone. I'm going to install the battery. Should fit in like this. Push down. There we go. And put the cover on. There we are, and let's check out the weight. Now with the battery and everything on it, it's going to be kind of heavy. Let's see what we get. So we're at 814 grams. Is that correct? Let me try that again. That's a lot of weight. Try that again. Yep. 814 grams. If you have questions on this drone, post them below and I will get back to you. If you'd like to buy this drone, well, the links to where you can buy it are below. Check it out. I don't know if there's a discount code, but if there is, it will be below. I know it's on sale currently, so check it out. It's under $1,000 US. I don't know how much under $1,000, but you have to check that out yourself. And if you enjoyed this review, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos on this drone, well, then post some comments below and I will see what I can do. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video. Bye.